Assalamualaikum. So this is the second video for chapter eight communication. Okay. So uh, we already covered uh, communication process and formal communication in the first video. So the rest of the objective we will cover in this video. Informal communication. Informal communication is social relationships okay, that are formed in the workplace outside of the normal organizational hierarchy. Okay, you see in the formal communication they have to follow the hierarchy, the organizational hierarchy or the organizational chart. But of course, when you work inside the organization, it's not necessarily that you will always have to communicate according to the hierarchy in the organization. Yeah, so whenever there happen the not according to the hierarchy, when you talk, when you chat with other people, not according to the hierarchy or not about the working, uh, the communication is not about the task, so we consider it as the informal communication. So here we have four types of uh, informal communication. Informal communication also known as grapevine. Okay? So there are four types of grapevine, single strand, gossip, probability and cluster. You see here are the diagrams for the each of the grapevine. The first one here we have the single strand. Or we can say uh, to explain it, each tells one another. You see here A pass to B, C, D, and so on. Okay, A here representing the people. Okay, let's say this uh, people, uh, a person. Okay, A, Mr. A. Mr. A pass the information to Mr. B. Mr. B get the information, then he pass it to C, and C pass it to D, and so on. Okay, uh, gossip. Gossip one tells all. You see here, meaning that one person A, A get the information, A get the gossip. So A tell whatever that she have to everyone that she knows. She pass it to B, to C, to D, and everyone at once. Okay. The third one is probability. Each randomly tells others. Okay, it start with A. So A randomly tell F and D, but didn't include J. Okay, so F when he heard it from A, he passed it to the random people. Okay, and so on. Okay, and the last one is cluster. Cluster some tell selected others, and most typically, okay, the others will pass it to the selected others. Okay, cluster meaning that the information uh, move. Okay from one group to the other group. So A tell his colleague to C, D, and F. Okay? And F tell his colleagues B and I, and so on. So it move the information move from one group to the other group. Okay? So let's see the explanation for all the information, informal communication. The first one, we have a single strand. Involve passing of information through a line of persons to ultimate recipient, okay, from one person to the other person, okay. However, it will take a uh, longer time because you pass it from one to the other and of course, when you heard the information, you tend to uh, add more information, interesting information or might lose some of information when you trans transfer it to the others, okay. The second one is gossip, okay? uh, used to convey information that is interesting and is non-job related. So usually gossip will be something that interesting that everyone want to hear about it. Okay? So it conveys information to as many people, to friends and relatives. Well, everyone she knows she will convey, send the gossip. The third one is probability. Okay? The probability chain is a random process okay, in which someone transmits the information to others. Okay? So at random, she just passed the information. She didn't select the person, she just tell it at random. Okay? So the other person, okay, the other people who gets the news will tell people or others at random. It might not send to everyone by random. The next one is cluster. A person tells the information to a few chosen individuals. So this one, uh, he already choose a few uh, people and then he send the message. So these few people, when they heard the message, then they, of course he will, uh, they will send it to a few of their colleagues. Okay. 
barriers to effective communication. Okay? So there are barriers uh, when we conduct the communication process. Okay? Um, effective communication meaning that whenever the sender send a message to the receiver, so it will be effective if the sender able to send the message, the receiver able to receive the message and uh, the receiver get exactly the meaning of the message that the sender sent. Okay? If the sender failed to send a message, the receiver didn't understand the message, so it is not effective. To be effective, we must both that the receiver get the message, understand the message. Okay? So what are the barriers to have this so that the receiver can send message, uh, sorry, the, the sender can send message, the receiver will understand the message. What uh, the barriers to make it happen. The first one is cross-cultural diversity. Different culture, they have different people, different nations have different culture. The way they talk, the way the, they speak to each other, the way they convey the message and so on. So sometimes the way we talk or send a message might uh, misinterpret by other culture. Okay? Trust and credibility. Sometimes we didn't have trust at that person. Let's say that when you, uh, there are two person A and B. So when A is talking to B, the B which didn't have trust to A, try to think uh, what is actually trying to convey or to send a message okay so he didn't get the direct message but he tried to think other thing okay because he don't have trust at any okay the language characteristic different language different dialects so maybe might misinterpret the people might misinterpret the message okay gender differences the way the male and female thought the way they behave uh, it's different, so sometimes we might misunderstand each other. Okay? Noise, okay? so whenever there are noise, we might cannot concentrate to the receiver, the sender unable to send a message and all. Information overload. Information overload meaning that there are too much information that the receiver cannot process okay so for example like um, you as a student you attend a lecture okay so the lecturer or the speaker have this lecture for one hour straight okay without break okay so there's too much information to process within one hour you can end you can only focus for the first 10 minutes and the rest of the lecture you your mind is everywhere you cannot focus anymore okay so that's why you, you cannot understand or get the message by the uh, sender poor listening okay you didn't know you cannot listen properly what the sender trying to say and time pressure sometimes because the communication happened in such a hurry so that the sender unable to get the feedback from the receiver so how to overcome this barrier we have we must overcome this barrier so that we can have uh, an effective communication first always obtain the feedback if you are as a sender when you send a message to the receiver always ask for the receiver's feedback feedback give feedback to the sender so that so the sender will, will know you get the message and you understand the message or if you are the receiver always give the feedback to the sender so that the sender will know yes uh, you get the, uh, the message correctly use simple language don't use different difficult language where other people don't understand okay? avoid noise if you think that the environment is not suitable for you to have the conversation to have the communication process so try to find other place where there are no noise at all okay? recognize emotion sometimes you see the in the sender might feel emotional or the receiver might have an emotions overload okay so try to understand that person try to put yourself in that person person positions okay do not make own conclusions always ask for the feedback always ask back to the person so that you didn't have to make your own conclusion which you might misunderstand okay, okay. and the last one is the categories of interpersonal communication what is interpersonal 
Interpersonal dominant inter is between the communication that happen between one person with the other person, okay? one group with the other group. So what are the categories of interpersonal communication that we can have or we can do? Okay? For example, we can do face-to-face -face, okay? communication, telephone call, group meetings, formal presentation, you can write the memo, uh, traditional mail, okay? fax machine, email hotlines computer conferencing that we have okay video mail teleconference video conference and video tips there are a lot of communication the categories that we can use okay to communicate with other people so that's it for chapter 8 uh, the communication we focus on communication where communication is very vital because we use com we, we communicate in our daily life okay so you must know how to communicate effectively so that uh, sender and receiver will understand each other. So uh, thank you. I hope you do understand this chapter.